And so, yes, you can make up all sorts of terrible hypotheticals. But what if you received a document about et cetera, et cetera? Um, would you sit on it? Well, what we have done sometimes is we've received a document about, which is a list of members of a neo-Nazi party in the UK, the British National Party. And we didn't release it immediately. We emailed all those members and said we're going to release it. And then we released it. Otherwise, there hasn't been any, I think it's a, a fair harm minimization strategy to just delay for a little while while you inform people who might be affected, then you release it. So, what's another example? Um, Maine may also for Guantanamo Bay. In fact, I, I'll ask you to think, with this and the next thing I mentioned, is there, is there a similarity between what has happened at Guantanamo Bay and offshore banking. Is there something that pulls these two things together? Offshore banking and Guantanamo Bay. So we got hold of the main manuals for Guantanamo Bay. And those manuals revealed, uh, first we got 2003. Uh, and Jeffrey Miller was the, the superintendent of, Gu the, sorry, the the general of Guantanamo at that stage. And they revealed some of the things that you've heard about now. In particular, that prisoners were being hidden from the Red Cross for the first month that they arrived, and other prisoners could be marked, never allow the Red Cross to see that person, and falsify the records uh, if the Red Cross comes. So you might think, oh, what does, what does that matter? Well, the US has signed up to many international conventions on war, the Geneva Conventions uh, being one, that says that people have a right to be visited by the Red Cross. Uh, in fact, not just prisoners of war, but all prisoners uh, have the right uh, to be visited by the Red Cross if you've signed up to those conventions. And they were hiding uh, those prisoners from the Red Cross and of course all the, the psychological uh, torture and abuse that you've heard about. Then, we, then uh, Major Jeffrey Miller said, sorry, what, not Major Jeffrey Miller, the, the spokesperson for Guantanamo Bay uh, at that time when we released, when we released this uh, was a, a Commander Bush. I'm, I'm sure that must have seemed like a good idea at the time, appointing that guy. Um, he said, well, that was 2003. It all got better immediately after that. And in response to that statement, our sources gave us 2004. And what do you do if you have two big documents and you want to compare them? Diff, side by side diff. What does side by side diff say about Guantanamo Bay? Well, side by side diff says the situation got much worse. But the cover got better. So every, inc every word where there was suicide in the manual, they changed this to self-harm. Uh, they introduced a new camp, Camp 4, a show camp, where every guard had to have excellent public relations skills. And, and the camp was much nicer, and they just, they just put the most cooperative prisoners there, and that's where they allowed the press to be. And it also violated an ancient tenet, at least an ancient European tenet, which is that at least everyone has the right to look at one another. And this is summed up by the aphorism even a cat may look at a king, and a swain's eye has higher reach as a lord's look. But in fact, in Guantanamo, when any dignitary was in walking through Guantanamo, every prisoner had to be physically grasped and turned away. So they could not even look at Donald Rumsfeld, as an example, walking through Guantanamo or Condoleezza Rice. And so uh, these are other people here are part of this article, uh, quite a, good, a long article on, our, on the comparisons between the two. Uh, they are the lawyers representing those Guantan Guantanamo Bay detainees. Uh, so we work with them to produce this analysis, which was then used uh, in the court cases to try and help uh, liberate those prisoners and used politically later on uh, to 
get the Obama administration to commit to closing down Guantanamo Bay, which he has. Uh, we'll see what actually happens. Maybe they'll all be sent to Bagram, but at least Guantanamo is going to close down. Okay. Actually, the, develop, the, developing, sorry, the developed world is doing very well out of this inequality. Extraordinarily well. And remember, out of that 154 billion of aid, about 50% is actually just a way of laundering money back to military contractors uh, in the home country. So we give you some money to buy rice, but it's got to be our rice. We give you money to buy a tank, but it's got to be our tank. Um, the biggest, uh, one third of all the world's private wealth, I, the people, individuals, have put in bank accounts, is in Switzerland. And the biggest private banking concern in Switzerland is Bank Julius Baer. Some of that money, they want to hide even more than they hide it in Switzerland. So they move it into the Cayman Islands. And we got hold of several hundred of their trusts, the details of their trust for Cayman Islands, and released these. As a result, uh, we were sued in San Francisco because our .org domain name registrar is in San Francisco, and the court compelled uh, the domain name registrar to remove uh, wikileaks.org from the registry. We'd already prepared for something like this. We had lots of alternative domain names, mainly to deal with Chinese censorship, uh, because we're censored in China. Um, and so everything stayed running, uh, but the main domain name went down until we built up a team of people, 20 lawyers altogether. New York Times sent lawyers, 11 other media organizations sent lawyers, Society for Professional Journalists, Ralph Nader's uh, Citizen.org, Pogo, EFF, ACLU. Uh, and within a week, we had o overturned, um, overturned that order and got our, our .org back. But at the time, people say, look, the, the US justice system reasserted itself. It is inherently just, absolute rubbish. Originally, there was three lawyers in that case, and we didn't even know that the case was on until 12 hours before. Then, eventually, we sent 20 lawyers. So it was 20 lawyers versus three lawyers. We managed, in fact, to outspend a Swiss bank. And that's why we won in the court system, because the US court system permits justice if, if you have enough money or enough friends with money. Uh, and we were able to gather, gather enough friends with money. So, once again, the, the internet doesn't just give you free speech from nowhere. You have to fight for it. Uh, you can bring justice to the court system, but it's not in there before you enter the door. Uh, so, what do you think the comparison is between these offshore banking cases and Guantanamo Bay? Well, the reason the money was hidden in the Cayman Islands was to keep it outside the law of all the other countries, the countries where it came from. And so you might say, someone with one of those accounts will say, well, I have it there for perfectly innocent reasons. I just want to put all my money in the Cayman Islands for some reason, perfectly innocent reason. Why, why would you take it all the way to the Cayman Islands? It's, it's not so you can go to the bank after lunch, right? You've got, and they charge about 20,000 per year just, just to keep the trust records. That's, that's very expensive banking fees. Well, in fact, everyone knows that the reason you use Swiss banks in the Cayman Islands, and if, if you're an individual, if you're not a company especially, is because you're trying to hide your assets. Uh, either be, probably because you've gained them in some way that someone will try and, and take them back. So you've you do real estate development and you, you sell a house, that, you sell a big building that's about to fall down, but before it falls down, you take all the money and you stick it in the Cayman Islands. And now people sell you, but they can't get the assets. Exactly the same thing happened in another Caribbean country 